Hi guys, uh, I just wanted to make this short little video here. <clears throat> to finish up the examples we didn't do in class, I feel like we did enough examples, but um, I would like to do more with you just to make sure that you're super, super confident in graphing rational functions. And also um, to make sure that you remember how to analyze graphs on your calculator since it's been a while since we've done that together. So. Let me go through this. I'll do example B, uh, example 2B, and I'll also do example 3B since we didn't do those ones in class together. All right, and then example 4, obviously. So, uh, example 2, again, if you remember, said if I'm graphing a rational function that has this form, then uh, there's a little recipe here. Step one, draw the asymptote. Step two, plot points to the left and right of the vertical asymptote. Step three, draw the two branches. That makes your hyperbola. Okay, so same recipe we've been following for the whole lesson for section 5.2, but um, now things are just slightly different. Okay, so if I compare this function in letter B to the function up here, I can see that my h is 1 and my k is 2 and so I can draw the asymptotes pretty quickly. I'm going to write it down explicitly though so that means that the vertical asymptote is x equals h which in this one in this case is 1 and the horizontal asymptote uh, is y equals k, which in this case is 2. Okay, so let's draw those asymptotes. x equals 1 would be right here. And y equals 2 would be right here for the horizontal asymptote. Then uh, we basically, if we follow the recipe, we did part one. Okay, let me erase some of this stuff here. Uh, we did part one, which was to draw the asymptotes. Then plot points to the left and right. So here's the vertical asymptote. So I'm gonna wanna plot a point somewhere on this side and then another point somewhere on this side uh, to see what the shape of the branches look like and where they belong. So uh, if we look at this function, uh, let's pick two x values. So one here and one here. And then find the y values for those corresponding x values. So I think it looks like an easy one to pick would be to go over here to x equals 2. And then again, to maybe x equals zero. Those two are either side of the vertical asymptote and they'll also give me uh, easy numbers to work with. So if I do let x equals two, I get y equals three over two minus one plus two. Again, substituting into that function there. And that gives me y equals three over one plus two, which is five. So when x is 2, y is 5. So when x is 2, which is over here, y is 5. Right there. Okay, so that's my one point. And then the other point, if I let x be, uh, I said 0, if I let x be 0, then I get y equals 3 over 0 minus 1 plus 2. That is y is 3 over negative 1 plus 2, which is negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So when x is 0, when x is 0, y is negative 1 down here. And so we did the second step, which is plot points to the left and right. Now let's draw the branches. Okay, let's draw the branches. If I draw the branches, I will get something like this, okay? Something like this. Again, this is not perfect. It's an approximation. If we want a perfect graph, we'd have to do draw a whole bunch of points. But something like that, this is good enough for our purposes. 
then we have to state the domain and range. The domain and range follow exactly from these two things, okay, from the vertical and horizontal asymptote. So we're, if you look at the graph, you see that uh, the asymptote, vertical asymptote, says x cannot be 1. This basically means x cannot be 1. So if I have to write that in interval notation, as we have to, we say uh, x goes from negative infinity to 1, open parentheses, not inclusive, and then union joining 1 with infinity. Okay, So again, if you look, uh, let me switch to another color here. If you look from where the graph lives, where the graph goes in terms of x, uh, it goes all the way this way. And then it approaches all the way close to 1, but never really touches 1 because that's an asymptote. But then if you look at the top here, the graph starts basically from 1, just bigger than 1, not including 1, and all the way to infinity out here. Okay, So that's how we're coming up with the uh, domain for the function. All right, uh, And then same thing here, range. Range, if I look at the asymptotes, this means y cannot be 2. So if the asymptote is y equals 2, that means y cannot actually be 2, because that's the asymptote. So if you look at the graph, uh, and you want to write this down, then the uh, um, range in interval notation is the function goes all the way from the bottom to at negative infinity, all the way up to 2, but it cannot really be 2. cannot be 2. Okay, So all the way up to 2, open parentheses, not included. And then union, the graph starts again just above 2 and goes all the way up to infinity. So the range is, again, from 2 uh, all the way to infinity. right? But 2 is not included and 1 is not included in the domain. So that's basically that. The question here also said um, compare the graph to the graph of y equals 1 over x. Now. Maybe I can dash that in here for you, but um, if I have that, let me do this in red. If I have that y equals uh, 1 over x looks like this, okay? It's quite different. Looks something like this and uh, something like this. All right, if you dash in the lines here. Something like that. So you can see basically what happened. And this is basically, you can say, the center with asymptotes at 0, 0 for y equals 1 over x. You can see that uh, this would be considered the new center. The function has been translated up two units and to the right one unit. Okay, And that's what tells us, that's what this tells us, up two units and to the right one unit. Okay. Uh, so that's the comparison with the original graph. And also, since this is a 3, the A value is a 3. Uh, the A value is a 3. A values bigger than 1 cause vertical stretch. So you can see that uh, if this is the center, so to speak, of the translated graph, it has been stretched. Uh, the, the graph has been stretched away from that center, where as if this red function was the original y equals 1 over x, it's pretty close to uh, the point. So the center has a, is pretty close to the, to the uh, first point we have there. <clears throat> Any case, so that's kind of a comparison, vertical stretch, and um, I just erased the function. Vertical stretch and uh, translation up to units and to the right one unit. So that's that's the comparison between this graph and y equals 1 over x. All right. So let's move on to uh, the third type again. These are still simple rational functions, the third type. And uh, we had this little box here that we worked through last time. And basically it said, uh, if you label the coefficients and constants a, b, c, d, in a rational function of this form, then the vertical asymptote is this, and the horizontal asymptote is that. Okay, so uh, let's just go ahead and work through that 
and make sure you're okay with this type, <clears throat> and then we'll work through example four. So, um, yeah, if I go and label this, I'm going to label this A, B, C, and D. You'll see that this is B, this is A, C is one, even though you don't see it there, and D is two. All right. So again, the recipe is the same. First, find the asymptotes and graph them. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, first, find the asymptotes and graph them. So I'm going to find the vertical asymptote first. And the vertical asymptote is uh, x equals negative d over c. Okay. So uh, d for us is 2. So I've got negative 2 is d and c is 1. All right. And that gives me uh, negative 2. Now, there's another way you should think about this. Um, even if I erase this stuff here, you should be thinking the bottom of the fraction can never be 0. Okay, uh, So you must say x plus 2 can never be 0. Therefore, x can never be negative 2. That's what it means to be an asymptote. Okay, x can, If it, x cannot be negative 2, then negative, x equals negative 2 is the asymptote. So that's another way of thinking about it without just uh, simply memorizing formulas and stuff. But um, I'll go back here and do that again for you. And so that's my vertical asymptote. So we can draw that right now. The vertical asymptote x equals negative 2, which means x can never be negative 2, is right here. Okay, And then uh, horizontal asymptote, horizontal asymptote right here. Uh, is y equals a over c. So a over c is 3 over 1, okay, which is 3 over 1. That means uh, y can never be 3, right? That's basically what it's saying. That's why the asymptote is 3. So if I draw the asymptote y equals 3, that puts me out here, okay? So I've again followed the recipe, draw the asymptotes, Second part of the recipe is, um, let me switch to a different color here. Second part of the recipe is uh, draw a point on either side. Uh, I said I'm not really too concerned about drawing points on either side for this graph. Definitely not for next lesson, but I'll show you how to do this in any case. Um, so we have to pick some nice values for x that will help us simplify this expression fairly simply. So... Uh, let's see, if I let x be a number and I let x be another number, one on either side of the asymptote. So if I let x be negative 1, so the, asymptote, the vertical asymptote is negative 2, so I want something here and maybe something here. And both of those might work, I don't know, let's see, it looks like negative 1 will be an easy one uh, because if I plug it in I get something nice on the bottom. So x, let x be negative 1, then I get this, y equals 3 times negative 1 minus 6 over negative 1 plus 2. And if you do this, you get negative 3, that's negative 9 over 1, so that's negative 9. Okay, And then pick another value for x, I think I said negative 3 might work because uh, it looks like something simple will emerge there too. Maybe, maybe it'll be huge. I don't know. Uh, let's see, negative 3. If I plug that in, I get y equals 3 times negative 3 minus 6 over negative 3 plus 2. Uh, and that gives me, what, uh, like negative 15 over negative 1, which is 15. So that's fairly big. Uh, if that makes you unhappy, it's okay, you can graph that, but if that makes you unhappy, you can try something different, uh, something further to the left. The further left I pick x values here, um, the smaller my y values will get. So we can do that, we can pick a different one if the 15 is a problem. It's not really a problem, but maybe it'll be nicer if we pick something else. So if we try, let's say, negative... Uh, 4, I don't know what that's going to do, negative 4, 
Maybe, let's see. Uh, y equals 3 times negative 4 minus 6 over negative 4 plus 2. That gives me negative 18 over negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. That gives me 9. So that's a little bit smaller, closer, fits on our grid. Okay, so that's fine either way. Uh, and then if we plot these points, if x is negative 1, I get negative 9, which is down here. And then if x is negative 4, I get positive 9, which is up here. Okay, and now you can just draw the branches and you can see that's kind of doing that up there, not quite close to the asymptote. Um, and that's it. That's that. And uh, if you were to find domain and range for this one, again, domain and range come directly from the asymptotes. So uh, let me zoom in here and write it over here. Domain would be what? Uh, you can see that every x can be anything except the number uh, negative 2 here. So x can be negative infinity all the way, ooh, I should do the union notation here, all the way to negative 2, but not including negative 2, union, uh, negative 2 to infinity. Okay, negative 2 to infinity. And then the range, uh, y can be anything except, if you look here, y can be anything except uh, 3. Okay, y can be anything except 3. So I do this negative infinity to 3, union 3 to infinity. y cannot be 3. Okay, that's what this means. Uh, and then that's basically that for graphing. Hopefully that's enough examples for you to graph and be comfortable with graphing. Um, let's look at example 4. And then uh, I'll go over some calculator skills with you too, and then we'll be done with this uh, section, okay? So uh, let's review this a little bit. It says, your long distance calling plan has a fixed monthly fee of four ninety five, dollars and costs five cents a minute. A little bit of an outdated example here, but it'll work for what we're trying to accomplish. It says, uh, write an equation that gives your average cost C in dollars per minute, uh, M during a given month. Okay, so your average cost C in dollars per minute M during a given month. All right, so uh, average cost, and they're saying the variable is C. Well, if you think about average, how do you find the average? You add up the total of a bunch of things and you divide by how many things there are. So in this case, we're talking about minutes. Um, I'm adding up the total amount of money I paid uh, and then I'm dividing by the number of minutes to get a dollars per minute cost. Okay, so th this is really what we're doing. We're doing total cost divided by total minutes. That's really what we're doing. How much did this cost me for uh, m minutes and then divide by m minutes to get dollars per minute? All right. So total cost here is uh, 4.95 fee right there, and then five cents a minute. So the more minutes I use, the more I pay. Five cents a minute looks like this though, right? Uh, 0.05 times the number of minutes, and then divided by total number of minutes would be m. Okay, a little bit unusual since m is in the top and also in the bottom, in the numerator and also in the denominator. But that's fine. This is really the function. It's the average cost function. Okay, and so uh, step b says graph the function on your calculator and use the graph to estimate, estimate when the average cost is 14 cents per minute. All right. So this is uh, two things here. We'll graph it on the calculator, that's fine. But use the graph to estimate when the average cost, so when C, the average cost is 0 0.14 dollars per minute, okay? Dollars per minute. That's what they're asking. So on your calculator, when you graph this, C will be a Y value, OK? 
okay? So when is a time question after how many minutes, basically? So they're asking us to give them an M. And in your calculator, uh, M is represented by X. So on your calculator, remember again, when you have a function like this, C equals 4.95 plus 0 0.05 M over M. Actually, that translates to Y equals 4.95 plus 0 0.05 X over X. That's really what we're doing. So they're giving us a Y. This is a Y value or a C value. And they're asking us to find an X or an M value minutes. Right? So just keep that in mind. So let's go to your calculator. And if you put in a function here, let's put it in. It is 4.95 plus 0.05x, which represents minutes, divided by number of minutes, which is x. Okay. And if we graph that, let's do zoom, zoom standard. All right, this is what I have. Um, but now I have to uh, do the intersection. Right, so so I'm trying to find the point at which cost is 14 cents per minute, and uh, the function um, intersects that cost value. So the way we do this is if they give you a y value, you just plot the y value. So we said here they gave us a y value of 14 cents per minute. Um, then I just put that in there, 0 0.14. It's a y value. And if you graph that, it'll add it to the graph. Now, the problem is, you can see here, I don't actually see where the two intersect. Where the two intersect is the answer. That x value is the answer. Okay, So I need to fix this a little bit. It looks like I need to go out this way. This part of the graph, if we're talking about minutes, we can have negative minutes. That's not important to us. So I need to adjust my window a little bit and say that I don't really need that negative, large negative x values, but I need large positive x values, so about 60 maybe. And then I can see that uh, since we're talking about when y is 14, at uh, 0.14, that intersection, um, I don't need large y values like this either. I can really make this y value uh, negative one for the minimum and for the maximum, maybe, I don't know, maybe one even, because we're trying to find an intersection at 0.14, that's really tiny. So let's try that window size. I'm not sure if it works right, but we'll try and say graph. And you can see it looks like uh, these two intersect over here. So that's a bit better. You can play with it some more and even get a better graph out of that if you really want to. Uh, maybe you can make your X max even bigger. I don't know, make it 100 or something. Graph it again, see what happens. Ah, now we can clearly see the intersection is over here. So you should have done this many times this year already. We did it together already many times. But how do I find the intersection? And that is go second, click second, then calc or trace, and then just go down to intersect, which is number five. Hit enter, and it will ask you what's the first curve you're talking about. It's in blue, it's blue. Just hit enter, sure, that can be the first curve. Second curve can be the red one, fine. And guess, no, I don't want to guess. Just keep hitting enter. And here's the intersection, 55, okay, 55. So uh, what this means is average cost C, or in my calculator Y, is 14 cents a minute when I've uh, called for 55 minutes. Okay, so that's what it means. So the answer here is um, X is... 55 minutes, okay? 55 minutes, because that's where the two functions intersect. Uh, cost Average cost is 14 cents a minute when time is 55 minutes, all right? So hopefully this will be helpful for you guys so you can finish your homework well. Thank you, guys.